So you're thinking about making a move to Kelowna, BC? Well, you've come to the right channel. Welcome to Live Love Kelowna. All right, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the pros, we're gonna be talking about the cons, we're gonna be talking about making a move from a large city, 1.5 million people, Calgary, Alberta, moving all the way out here to BC, to beautiful Kelowna, the Okanagan Valley. I'm gonna give you some insight and perspective what a lot of the local agents that have been here for a long time can offer, and that is making a move from a large center to a small center, what the pros of those are, and what the cons that I've seen over the last year in about 14 months, I guess, year and a half or so. All right, when we started researching our move to Cologne all the way back in 2019, I wish I had a blog post or a video similar to this that would give us some, some great insight into the pros and the cons of actually living here in Kelowna. Now, I've written and done a lot of video around living in Cologne and all the great things to do in previous posts. This is my first pros and cons style video, and I'm absolutely positive that I'm gonna be doing a few more of these videos that are gonna definitely be focused more on the positive than on the negative. Okay, I'm gonna give you the great and the not so great without any fluff and no BS, and this is based on what I've seen over the course of the last 16 or 18 months living here in Kelowna. All right, first, the cons. I'm gonna come at this list from my perspective and what I've seen more or less on a daily basis here in Kelowna. Others that have lived here for a lot longer than me are obviously going to have a lot more to say and perhaps a different point of view. That being said, if you're reading this and you're a local, please leave a comment down below of this video and let me know what I've missed. All right, the number one con of living in Kelowna is the traffic and the transit system. See, I grew up in Prince George and I moved to Edmonton in 1998. So I spent uh, five years there and then the, the next 18 years in Calgary. So I spent as much time in a small town as I did in the big cities. And I can tell you that the big cities have something figured out when it comes to infrastructure. City Council here in Cologne over the last eight years has been incredibly short-sighted in my opinion when it comes to approving new, new housing developments but not focusing on and supporting it with widening of roads, adding overpasses along Harvey Boulevard, or even looking at putting in some sort of a ring road type system. Now, word to the wise, rush hour in Kelowna starts at around 3.30 in the afternoon and it takes you you know, an hour to get to where, to where you're going where typically it would only take about 15 to 30 minutes. Now, if you've arrived at your destination within 30 minutes, that's great. It could take you even longer, especially if you're heading out to West Kelowna and going, going over the bridge. Now, this is something that I had to get used to coming from Calgary, where usually rush hour usually started around five o'clock. All right, the number two con of living in Kelowna is the high cost of living. As of right now, it's uh, the middle of October. The price of a liter of gas is, is running about $2. Groceries have gone up, property taxes have increased. It costs a family of four a minimum of $100 to eat out in a restaurant. If you're thinking about buying a home with a pool, make sure that you prepare for utility bills to be north of about $400 a month. Plus there's GST and PST combined to around 12% and that's a tax on everything here in BC. So not only that, but coming from Alberta where there was no land transfer cash grab, it was difficult to stomach having to pay that tax into a general revenue account uh, with the government. And you know full well that that money isn't going back into infrastructure and what's needed for our area. But I digress. I told myself I wasn't gonna be political in this post and I'm gonna try my best not to be. At the end of the day, you need to prepare to pay way more for some things and less in other areas comparative to some of the larger cities like Calgary. Like for example, property taxes are actually less than what we paid where we lived in West Calgary. So there's that. Okay, the number three con is housing affordability in Kelowna and the Okanagan Valley. Housing prices here skyrocketed over the last two years. Prices are up on single family well over 34%. And actually, if you're interested in how interest rates, inflation, pending recession will affect the market here, then check out our latest blog post on that topic. I did a video with Clay Blaney, who's a mortgage broker here in the Kelowna market. Now, this makes it difficult for tradespeople to move here, makes it difficult for nurses and lab techs to find homes here. Affordable housing is absolutely a key component to the election that's currently taking place here in the Kelowna area. It makes it difficult for people making a move from say Saskatchewan where housing prices are half of what they are here, maybe even a quarter of what they are. If they don't have the equity, it's gonna make it incredibly difficult to find a great home. Part of the problem is that there's a lack of land that's available and it's all protected by the ALC or the Agricultural Land Commission. 
This is a bureaucracy unlike anything I've ever seen over my 15 years and being, re being in real estate. And, and here we go getting political again. We'll try to keep that to a minimum. If the city could get more land taken out of the ALR, this would lead to more building of rental, rental units, larger multifamily developments, townhouses, and of course, single family homes. The increase in supply will help to put pressure on pricing and allow builders to keep up with demand, which should actually settle pricing out for the long term. All right, the number four con of living in Kelowna is the crime. Kelowna is, I believe, per, on a per capita basis, one of the worst cities in British Columbia, if not Western Canada, with regards to, to uh, crime rate. Uh, some of my colleagues might roast me for being this blunt, but it is what it is. If you're coming to town and you've got a mountain bike or my, mountain bikes attached to the back of your vehicle, do not leave them unattended. Make sure that you've got somebody outside of the vehicle when you go into the Wendy's or you go into the Superstore or wherever that you're going. Make sure that there's somebody there to guard the bikes because I can guarantee you this, like death and taxes, those bikes will be gone. Now, I put this as number four, quite honestly, because I haven't seen a lot of crime that gets talked about daily here. Maybe because I work from home mostly, maybe because I don't spend a lot of time in the areas where crime is really high. But what I can tell you is that I saw more and heard about more crime in the west part of Calgary in the neighborhood that I lived in over the course of the last seven years than I have here in Kelowna over the last year and a half. So, so you know, a couple of, uh, couple of um, pieces of advice. Don't leave your doors unlocked on your car if it's parked in the driveway or on the street. Don't leave your house unlocked or your windows unlocked. Make sure if you're riding a bike and you're heading downtown or you're going to the mall or wherever it is that you're going in the city, make sure that you're not using a wire lock. These guys, these, these people that are stealing these bikes, they just go to the surplus store and they pick up these wire cutters for relatively inexpensive and they come along and snip in them all of a sudden your, your bike is gone. So making sure if you're at the waterfront, you're at Staples or you're downtown, you're at the mall, doesn't matter. Just don't leave your things unattended and make sure that you've got the right lock. Oh, and also, if you wind up going to H2O, the YMCA, please don't leave your stuff in a locker unlocked. My son might be able to tell you a little bit more of that. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, just trust me on this one. All right, enough of the negativity. Let's get on to the pros. So obviously, if the pros didn't outweigh the cons of living in Kelowna, we never would have moved our family here. After having visited Kelowna multiple times over the course of the last 23 years that I lived in Alberta, I can say unequivocally that Kelowna isn't at all what I expected in good ways and in bad ways. I just about outlined all of the cons of living here. This is what I love about living in Kelowna. All right, the number one pro in my opinion of living in Kelowna is the scenery. It doesn't matter where you are in the city, you are either looking at the mountains or at the lake or both. Now, granted the mountains in Kelowna are not the Rockies like what we're used to seeing just outside of, of Calgary on the weekends, but hey, they're inside of the city. We get to look at them every single day. They're beautiful all the same. And, and getting to head <clears throat> to one of the many beaches on any given day from May straight through to September is an added bonus. When we lived in Calgary, we always had to travel outside the city to get to the lake. So this is something that's uh, fantastic and very unfamiliar for us. I wish we would have spent more time at the beach this last summer than we actually did, but it's there all the time and all the same, and we can take advantage of it whenever we can. Kelowna is not a concrete jungle like most major metropolitan cities. This is part of the charm of this medium-sized city in the, in the interior of BC. The scenery here is second to none in my opinion. All right, number two pro of living in Kelowna are the never-ending things to do. Kelowna is a huge playground. There's no other way to put it. If you love being outdoors, then you will love living here. From hiking multiple trails within the city and just outside the city limits to mountain biking to taking water sports or just hanging out at the beach or teeing off at one of the multiple golf courses that Kelowna has to offer, you're never going to be without something to do. There's something for everyone here in Kelowna. Now, I've created a playlist here on YouTube, on our YouTube channel so you can check out all of the amazing things to do. We're going to continue to upload new videos to that specific playlist. Um, you know, every time we go out on an adventure, I'm going to be uh, capturing content and showing off uh, exactly what the Okanagan Valley has to offer. All right, the number three pro of living in Kelowna is proximity. What do I mean by that? Well, let me tell you, I can be in Lake Country in about 15 minutes and swimming in Lake Kalmalka or, or Wood Lake in about 20 I can be in Penticton in about 45 minutes and be at Skaha Beach and swimming in about an hour. I can be in the, in the United States in about an hour and a half. If I wanted to head up to Vernon, it's going to take me 30 to 40 minutes to get to Predator Ridge to go golf for the day. 
Also, Kelowna has an international airport and flies to direct to some of my favorite destinations like Mexico, Las Vegas, and certain states in the US. This proximity opens up the playground and the possibilities. If I wanted to head out camping with the family for the weekend, I can certainly do that and be at a provincial campground within about 15 minutes to 45 minutes. How about skiing, snowboarding in the mountains? Big White is a 45 minute clip from downtown Kelowna. Very, very quick. Road is very, very safe. Now compare that to Calgary, one and a half hours to get to Lake Louise, about two hours, two and a half hours to get to Sunshine Village. It reminds me of how close Nakiska was to west side of Calgary, but with way better snow. Okay, the number four pro of living in Kelowna is the food and beverage scene. Now I'm not a foodie. I like food. I have to eat it to sustain myself, but it isn't something that I love to do. I don't love to go out to restaurants and, and eat a bunch of stuff. I like to, I'm a creature of habit. I like to kind of find one restaurant and that's, you know, two or three of them, you know, go in and eat at those places on a regular basis. Do we step outside of that comfort zone every once in a while? Yeah, sure. What I really love is the beverage scene. And I was really delighted to discover that Kelowna has a real budding craft beer industry here. In fact, some would say that it's actually exploding. It certainly isn't on par with the wine industry here in Kelowna, but it soon will be. It's just exploding in my opinion right now. So the options that you have in the food scene here in Kelowna, I would argue are probably fairly similar to what you would see in a major metropolitan center like Calgary or Edmonton or Vancouver. Calgary's food scene, it seemed like it was just never ending. You could go to a restaurant, a new restaurant every single week and never eat at the same place twice for probably the next three years. Now, I wouldn't say Kelowna's on, on par with that, but it's relatively close to it. If you were to eat at different places throughout, you know, throughout the month, one place, a different place every single week throughout the month, you're definitely not going to be repeating yourself within the, that next 12 to 24 months. That's for sure. Okay, Cologne is also very similar in that they have a lot of ethnic variety that you'd be looking for in, uh, you know, like Vietnamese food or Mexican or French, Canadian, Brazilian. There's all kinds of different options there. Okay, being that we have kids at the age that they're at, I would say the number five pro to living in Kelowna is the access to higher education. Uh, having grown up in a small town of 70,000 people, we had a college in that town for quite a few years that allowed for university transfer courses that could be used at university credits at universities throughout the country, which was fantastic. There wasn't an actual university in that town until later on, until actually I wound up leaving Prince George. So it was really great to know that UBC actually has a campus here in Kelowna. They've also got Okanagan College, which is an option to take university level transfer courses in a smaller class size environment. And OK College also offers trades and apprenticeship training as well as technology, business, continuing ed, and so much more. So this is great. Living in a smaller center that allows your kids to now attend higher learning campuses right here in the Okanagan instead of having to head down to expensive, more expensive places like Vancouver or Edmonton or Calgary. So think about it. Your kids could keep living with you until they're low to mid 20s. Isn't that exciting? Okay, that's it. Those are the top five cons, the top five pros to living in Kelowna. Now, if you're serious about making a move to Kelowna, Lake Country, Vernon, Peachland, Summerland, Penticton, anywhere throughout the Okanagan, I would suggest these four points. If you can come down here for a week or two and spend some time in the city in the summer and in the winter, get to know the different neighborhoods in Kelowna and get to understand the traffic patterns, tour around the schools, and time how long it takes to get to certain destinations from different areas. So number two is getting a good understanding of the cost of living here in Kelowna. There's a fantastic resource that I found online that's actually, if you Google cost of living calculator Kelowna, it will take you over to this government of BC website that allows you to plunk in a bunch of different information and it will tell you things like what your expected property taxes are, what the gas uh, prices are like, uh, which I mentioned before, they're about $2 a liter right now, mid-October, um, you know, all kinds of different information. So definitely use that as a resource. resource. Okay, here's point number three. Research the schools if that's important. Know what neighborhoods feed into which schools. Now, if you were to Google uh, school catchments Kelowna, one of the first links that pops up on that search will be for SD23. So that's school district number 23. They will have all of the catchments and maps that show which neighborhoods actually feed into which schools. So make sure that you check that out as a resource because you need to understand that if you live in Wilden, your kids are going to be going to Dr. Knox uh, for middle school and then likely off to KSS, Kelowna Senior Secondary for high school. So if they live in Upper Mission or Kettle Valley, a lower mission, they're going to wind up going to Canyon Falls for middle school and then wind up going to Okanagan Mission for high school. 
So make sure that you get to know the churches, the rec centers, and any other po important aspect or part of your life uh, that's important to you as a family, like understanding what clubs or teams or different sports that are offered. Okay, here's point number four. This is the pitch. I can offer you a different perspective than a lot of the other agents that have, uh, you know, that were born and raised here or that have been here for a long time. I moved my entire family from one province to another, from a large center to a smaller center. And I have that very unique perspective to offer you uh, in, in every aspect of, of what it's going to take in order for you to be able to make this move. So if you're interested in a conversation, make sure that you reach out to me. You can either call me or shoot me a text at 403-827-7527. You can always send me an email, kelly at kellyscar.com. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, or you, if you're watching this on the blog, you can always leave a comment down below and, and I will definitely reach back out to you and we'll set up a time to actually have a conversation. All right, that's all I got for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Take care.